You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Like and subscribe for more. Hi, Homeworthy. I'm Cecilia. Welcome to my Brookline, Massachusetts home. I cannot wait to show you around. Come on in. My name is Cecilia Casagrande, and we are in Brookline, Massachusetts, in my 1872 Victorian. So I came into interior design a little later in life. Um, I started my career after getting a double master's in public health and social work at Boston University. Um, I worked in public health and social work for almost a decade and then came back to my true love and passion, which I got from my mom, who was an antiques collector and decorator, and my dad, who um, is in the hotel industry. And I found that doing my own houses and construction um, on my previous houses and then selling them for and making a nice profit this is what I'm actually really good at. So I decided to pursue it and it's gone really well so far. I've been doing it for now seven and a half years and I've stuck with my British roots and kept going with my true love, which is color and pattern. And um, it is now quite popular. So I'm very, very pleased with that. So I love this neighborhood um, in, of Boston. It's a great little town called Brookline and um, knew we wanted to come here. The school district's amazing. I have three teenage sons right now, but um, when we were coming, we were looking for great schools and a great town. And we looked at a few houses in the neighborhood, but as soon as I walked into this one, I knew I wanted a Victorian. And I love the height of the ceilings and the molding and the architecture. Um, and as soon as I walked into this one, the sun was pouring in and the light is so amazing and the windows are so high that I said I have to, I have to get this one. Even though the kitchen was in the garden level and uh, there was no kitchen on the first floor and no bathroom um, on the first floor. So I thought, that's all right, I'll fix it up. <laughs> um, but it's all about the light and the original architecture that I love so much. and. Putting in a kitchen in a different spot's no problem. It was definitely a labor of love, and it certainly was a labor. The room I'm in right now is the kitchen, and currently, but it wasn't. It was the living room, and it was a spectacular living room. And uh, now it's a spectacular kitchen, so um, there was a lot of work to be done here to make it into our family home. Welcome to the vestibule. This is where we first come in and hang up our coats, drop the mail, drop our purse. And in here, I, since I mentioned I have three sons, I put up this really fantastic wallpaper that is a um, urban toile wallpaper by Tamar Species, my, one of my favorite British designers. And it is a take on traditional toile in that the scenes here are very city and they have modern elements like street lights and bikers and kids on skateboards and it's really fun. Now we're heading into my grand hallway and entryway. This is Trixie and she is nine year old Welsh Springer Spaniel. Welcome to my entryway hallway and what also feels like a room because it is quite wide. Um, I really wanted to accentuate the ceiling height and I painted it black so it you eye draws right up and um, when you have a black ceiling your really modern white lights really show and these I love so much because they are modern and traditional there's um, some elements of the ceiling medallion, old-fashioned ceiling medallions, in the light. They're called Sky Garden, and I love them. I also put in a really casual, fun rock and rug that I got on a trip in, with a good friend. We went to Marrakesh and found this in the market. 
I also found this fantastic Victorian sofa that um, I recovered in this beautiful Christian Lacroix fabric that is also quite modern. I love the mix of mo very modern fabric with old furniture. Um, also here is a beautiful Victorian old chest that had the coolest hardware on it. And um, it was covered in black when I found it and I spent quite a bit of time polishing it up to get it all pretty and it's perfect for hats and gloves and whatever else. <laughs> um, and found this fabulous mirror in New York City that is also modern, but yet quite, you know, antiqued in the glass. And you'll see throughout my house that I have a lot of vintage art. I am in love with vintage art. It is such a fun way to have your house be eclectic and warm and interesting and have stories to tell. All of these were found in different places. This is a urban artist from LA. This is a piece of vintage art I found in my favorite place to find art, Brimfield Antique Market in Massachusetts. Um, some photography by um, a high school friend of my husband. And um, this was a modern piece I found in a local store in the local neighborhood here in Boston. So I love the mix of old and new. Um, and I feel like the very fresh white background to this extremely old, awesome piece, Victorian piece of art is fantastic. I got that at Brimfield. I love it. So I approach an entryway as another place to, of course, have either a place to sit, a place to put things. Um, in my case, here in this house, it's so wide that it could actually be another room, practically. My husband and I actually sit here and have little chats. But I approach it with, we need a place to sit, put on shoes, or have a chat. So we started with the sofa. And then, of course, we need a place to put things and store and rest our keys or whatever. And this was extremely good find to have a really beautiful art piece and vintage cabinet. And so this is what brought it together. And then the rug, filling the space with a rug that's big enough to make it feel like a room um, rather than just a walkthrough is what really made this space unique. So welcome to my living room. Um, this actually used to be the dining room and um, the first thing I did, I wanted it to be warm and um, feel like a space where we can keep our things and show off our, all our goodies from our travels and art and make it more like a living room. So the first thing I did was add these bookshelves on either side of the fireplace and then um, really took care of this woodwork, cleaned it up, and painted the room in this gorgeous Farron Ball hay blue color that I love so much. And I wanted the space to be able to accommodate as many people as possible. And how I did that was with this amazing, very large sectional sofa that doesn't feel too big because it really surrounds the room very nicely. Um, and then, I found this vintage chair, which is a Thayer Coggin at an estate sale, which was such a good find. This chair is called a Papa Bear Chair and um, by Hans Wegner. And I love the mix of mid-century and Victorian and modern. And so we had to have some nice mid-century in here. And this is a great example of the perfect mid-century chair. It's so comfortable. This is our coffee spot in the morning. <laughs> Um, and you'll see on my shelves lots of art and decorative objects that I've found from my travels or from Brimfield Antique Market, estate sales, antique shops, vintage markets, craft fairs, you name it. Um, one of my favorite things, few things are on, is on this shelf. This was from a trip to Mexico and it's by a pretty famous artist, all hand painted cute, adorable, but really beautiful monkey. Um, and I love some of these other ins Asian inspired dragon 
some beautiful vases, all from my travels and exploring vintage antique shops. This mirror was from a antique store in Jamaica Plain in Boston that um, I found and it's been in a few houses of mine and it looks like it just was here when I moved here but it it came with me and it's it's pretty awesome. The light is a mid-century inspired light by Jonathan Adler. Really fun Sputnik but uh, with a little more flair to it. So you can see that I mix a lot of different time periods and a lot of different colors and a lot of different patterns and um, but it still all comes together. I think the key here is to really have a nice color palette and keep the color palette consistent through your, the um, patterns and the fabrics and paint color and window treatments and so it doesn't feel too disjointed and so these rich warm colors with the blue and the and the burgundy and orange it really runs throughout even in the woodwork um, mixing the time periods i think it's just they go you don't want all of one all mid-century it'll look too much so i i think i think it works i mean the the couch is a mid-century feel but it is a mo very modern couch because the tufting isn't quite so tufted. It's a more of a waffle tuft. The sofa being the same blue as the wall color, I think it also calms the space and the sofa can blend into the wall really nicely. I did make a big pivot in my life from social work and public health, um, but it was always there. I was always doing interior design for my friends, for myself. And um, interestingly though, social work is very much in inter residential interior design. I use it all the time. You have all the skills I learned in social work school, school um, listening, um, repeating back and hearing people and finding out where they are. And it's about families and it's about the how they live and how they want to live a more healthy life. And they want it, their home to feel relaxed and comforting and safe and all those things we do in social work we do in interior design for residential for sure so it wasn't such a big pivot after all <laughs> and people always ask me I want a healthy home I want to feel comfortable here I want to be inspired and so that's what I do using all my social work skills as well as you know my artistic creativity. So just across the living room is my kitchen um, and as I mentioned before this was not always a kitchen it used to be the living room from the previous owners and it is the room with the best light so it had to be the kitchen and um, I wanted a kitchen that wasn't such a kitchen and more like a living room since we really do live in the kitchen my three boys my husband and I, we live here, so I want it to be more like a living room and, um, and with a feeling of it being like a Paris bistro because I lived in Paris for a year and I wanted to feel like I was back in Europe and back in Paris. Um, I love to cook and so that's why I made this kitchen quite warm and cozy. So when I got here, it, there was just a big empty room. There was actually a fireplace on that wall. And so I wanted to keep the fireplace very much in the kitchen, but we couldn't have both an island and a banquet Eden's um, area to sit. And I really wanted to have that banquet and Eden area. So I had to sacrifice the um, fireplace. But to make me feel better, I put up this amazing wallpaper. And I saw this wallpaper um, in one little picture in a magazine and I knew this was going to be the inspiration for my kitchen. I love this wallpaper. It took my breath away. It made my heart go pitter patter. That's actually what I say to my clients all the time. Do you love it so much? Does it make your heart go pitter patter? Because that's what we're gonna do if it makes your heart go pitter patter. And that's what this wallpaper does. 
Um, it's called Dark Floral by Ellie Cashman, and um, I knew it would be the best way to start my Parisian bistro kitchen. And uh, so we cover the wall, put up the wallpaper, um, and then the stove from France, and I custom made this matching hood, which goes beautifully with it. My husband jokes and says we could have maybe bought a sports car for this hood <laughs> um, and found some beautiful lighting. I love, love lighting so much at all levels. Lighting is so important. It is true that it is the jewelry to the room. Um, and you want your lighting at different, different eye levels and not just overhead lights. Um, if it was up to me, I wouldn't have any overhead recessed lights and only beautiful decorative lighting like the um, sconces and a pendant over the table, sconces over the um, stove, the um, countertop over there, and then this beautiful pendant, decorative pendant light, which is just the wow of the room. We use all the different lighting at all different times of day. We turn off the overheads and have just mood lighting for dinner, and then it becomes a completely different room. And then in the morning, we don't even need any lights because the sun is flowing in. So this is the Eden dining area, which we also live at. My son sometimes falls asleep after sports practice, waiting for dinner on the banquet seat. I love banquets. I think they there's nothing better. We can fill so many kids here for birthday parties or and have family dinners. It, they're just fantastic. Just sit and have coffee here. I have, you know, meet people here all the time. Um, so I really wanted to do it up and make it really fabulous with this super wool fabric that um, it's really easy to keep clean. But just just a soap and sponge. You can wash off wool easily. And um, these pillows I recently had made um, really make the space layered and beautiful. But again, like I said, all the um, palette is one palette. So you can mix all these patterns because it is all one palette and comes all together with the eggplant and the blush and the um, green and wood and the walnut of the wood. So the table's actually new. It was made in California. We found, um, I found it again, a little picture somewhere in a magazine. And I found the guy and went to go visit him in LA where he makes his tables. And um, it was so much fun to pick out the piece of walnut that goes on top. And um, here again, I love mixing the very new with some vintage candlesticks like this mid-century find. I found. I also put in some classic mid-century chairs here and covered it in this eggplant wool um, as well. This is a knoll fabric and um, pulled together more of the color palette with these beautiful window treatments um, with, in this linen with some birds on it that really feels like I brought the outdoors in here and uh, takes away all the colds that a kitchen can sometimes be. So one more thing to note, I really love work using unlacquered brass um, for my handles and my faucet, even the sink I had custom made in the unlacquered brass. The patina that over time happens with unlacquered brass is really beautiful and it's actually very easy to maintain if you ever want it to shine up. A little brasso and it looks gorgeous, but it really um, is so nice to have that um, natural metal finish that just will change over time. In my kitchen, it was really more about it being a living room than an actual kitchen. And yes, I did have to have some cabinets. So for here, I didn't want to block any bit of this window. So I put this pot drawer down here, which I can keep for my Le Creuset pots. And um, what better way to top a pot drawer than a little bench seat? And um, this bench seat is in the perfect spot to have a little seat, take a cookbook, talk to the chef, open up the cookbook and talk about the recipes that you plan on making, hope to making, and probably won't be making anytime soon, but maybe over the weekend. I love European design and British design and um, color 
absolutely is my most inspiration. I love bringing rich colors from, from nature, from um, art, from fashion sometimes inspires me. Um, I think fashion is always forward and ahead of the game and I love looking at um, what designers are doing in the fashion world as well as what looking at old architecture in Europe, for example, or just tile in Portugal or when I travel mostly, I get a lot of inspiration. Welcome to my dining room. This room used to be two little rooms. Um, there was like a mini office and a bathroom. And when I made my the dining room into a living room, I still wanted to have a dining room. I love having a dining room separate from the kitchen. You can have a great big mess of a kitchen to when you have a party and you can come here and escape the dirty dishes and have a great dinner party and no one is looking at pots or pans or anything related to kitchen and can really relax and enjoy your party and enjoy your dinner. Um, we've sat in this small room and crowded in 12 people and had a blast for many, many hours. Um, so I highly recommend keeping the dining room and always having a separate dining room. During COVID, um, we didn't need the dining room, but we did need an office for my husband. So we put on these doors, um, which was a great addition. And I actually really do like them, even when we don't use them that much anymore. I want to point out, again, my love of vintage art. I found some great pieces at um, Brimfield and a antiques shop of and um but it started i wanted to break up all the lines of this fabulous wallpaper and uh, needed big pieces and thought why not put up black and white photos of mine and my husband's favorite movies from growing up and this is mine something like it hot with marilyn monroe jack lemon and tony curse and it's such a great um, story and people love talking about uh, during dinner what their favorite movies were growing up. Um, mine was on the VHS <laughs> tape of, with this movie that I would watch over and over and over again because we did not have Netflix then. <laughs> Another thing to mention in here is a great example of mix again of different times, very mid-century. This table is a um, Saarinen table, tulip and um, beautiful rosewood top. And then I have this very old Art Deco bar cabinet um, with some pretty inlaid wood right here with a modern Jonathan Adler lamp. And I think it all works, comes together nicely. The dark wood of the Art Deco cabinet is pulled out in this beautiful wood here in the um, Saarinen table and this fabulous Italian lamp. So when I added the dining room, we took away a bathroom and we still needed a bathroom on the first floor. Um, this was a coat closet and I made it into a little powder room. Welcome to my powder room. So I started this bathroom with the wallpaper, which is by uh, Grow House Grow, and it is Victorian women walking and playing with insects. And of course that should be the powder room wallpaper. And then I added a really girly light, some a print from Paris, the, Chant, the um, Seine, I found that. And um, this tiny powder room has a lot of character. Okay, let's head on upstairs to my bedroom. Please make sure you notice all, some more of my vintage art that I found at Brimfield. And here again, I mixed some serious old antique um, architecture with a very modern piece of art. And I think it looks great. Um, this piece is from a local artist from Boston. And I, I really love it. Fills the space beautifully and complements all the rest of my vintage art. You know, you may, after climbing upstairs, when you have a house that has almost 12 foot ceilings, that's a lot of stairs. So you may want a little seat. And here I have this 
really neat find um, from Craigslist, actually. But it is a beautiful mid-century chair, and I just had it recovered in this fantastic fabric from Paris that I just adore. Now we're heading into my bedroom. And here, I wanted it to be really relaxing and cozy and warm and dark and moody. Um, it's not so dark and moody because the light is so great. Um, but at night, it's wonderful. The um, room is painted a dark, rich green, and I did the trim in a more sagey green. Um, when the Roman shades come down, it's like art coming down, watercolor paintings. I love these Romans. <laughs> And um, we, of course, have an Eames chair to relax in, have a chat. Um, that and this mirror was left at the house, and I painted it this fun um, turquoise color. And I just had this bed made in California. It's a really great mid-century inspired bed. And this dresser, another California-based carpenter made this. And we happened to be in LA and went to go visit him and saw him in his little shop where he was making this beautiful dresser. And I love the lines on it. I love that it's um, very clean, but only, and shows off the wood, this walnut, so really awesome. More vintage art that I find and then put in really fantastic frames, um, which always cost more than the art. And these were fined from a estate sale, Brimfield Antique Market, and I couldn't resist this really adorable little vase. I would describe my style as eclectic, I think is the best word <laughs> to describe my style because I couldn't put myself in one box of mid-century or modern. I love the extremes, I would say, more than maybe normal. <laughs> um, I'm love the extreme of very modern with very old and then everything in between and the challenge and interest is bringing it together and that's what i love about this job and what i do is figuring out how to put it all together the different styles the different patterns i love fabric so much and the patterns in fabric the textures the colors and so how to bring it all together, how to use it all when I want to use it all and then pull it back. So I definitely believe in plants. I think a room is naked without plants, um, without having some green, some life. It is also one of the best ways to fill a space, to bring life in, um, to bring some green, bring in oxygen. It's, it's everything. If you can't have fresh flowers, at least have a plant um, because it's without that plant, picture that space, it would be so empty. It's, I, love, I love decorating and designing with plants of mine. Mm -hmm. Finding interesting pots for them also is another way to make things arty and more interesting. Um, always looking for antique vintage pots different unique ways to put plants in is fun too. So it's all about the layers and layering plants, that last bit of layering in is what brings the room alive to me, I think so. So welcome to my bathroom. This bathroom was awful before I got to it. And this was the last room in the house that I um, designed and renovated. And it sure needed it. It had a tub and it was just terrible. And um, I said to my husband, this is it. This is my last room in the house. I'm really going all out. Are you up for it? And um, he said, sure, um, which is nice. <laughs> Started with this wallpaper. I wanted it to feel like one of the hotels that we stayed at on our honeymoon. Um, and it's really a combination of my, our love of travel and the um, Parisian gardens that we saw. And then when we went to Southeast Asia, we were in Cambodia, we stayed at a hotel with a pool that was the color of this tile. So brought it all together with my favorite hotel in Spain, floor tile, 
my favorite hotel in Paris at, with gardens by nearby, and then um, the hotel in Cambodia with the pool of this that tile color. And um, I saw this stone when I was looking for a client for a countertop, and it reminds me of Oreo ice cream, but. It is so beautiful, the black and white and mixed um, mixture looks just so beautiful in this room. You will notice that I have these um, amazing lights that are from France and they are birds. How cool are those? In the trees of my wallpaper, which is actually a mural and not just one quick repeat. It's a very big repeat and uh, it comes together. Home means to me um, comfort and inspiration, a place where you can be yourself, um, keep all the things you love, the people you love, cook for the people you love, um, and have a place to gather friends and feel comfortable, feel excited to be in this, in your space. And that's home. Thanks for watching. For more homeworthy content, be sure to like and subscribe.